the explosion containment pie dish is out, not because there's going to be a fiery explosion, but because there's going to be a big, wet, creamy explosion. So the device in question is this. I found one listing, just one listing in the whole of eBay that sells these, unless they're under some cryptic word combination. But it says, DC 3V, 5V, 6V, micro mini liquid pump, foam pump, water pump, DIY hand washing machine. And this, uh, it came out at $3.55, which is £2.72, with 99 cents shipping, which is 76 pence shipping. And this is a low voltage DC motor driven pump that has a liquid intake here. It's got an air intake here, and then it combines the two and uh, produces a foam. And this one appears to have the mesh on the output built in, because if you look at the other ones that just combine them straight together, it ends up quite coarse and bubbly. But this one puts out a fairly strong mousse. Let me demonstrate. So the power supply is on, and it's sucking the liquid from this container, which is just a glass, uh, with wash-up liquid and water in it. And it's not that loud. And it's producing a fairly thick foam. It's a very light, fluffy foam, actually. It's quite nice. That's messy. Kind of regretting doing that. And it runs right down. As you turn the voltage down, that's about 4.5 volts. If I turn the voltage down, the output reduces. But if you go too low, it starts just being a bit wetter. That's it, just ticking over it. A fraction of a volt. It's like that's less than a volt it's running at right now. But I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend typically about three volts to five volts. And that as you turn the voltage up, the, the pumping action and the moosing gets faster. I shall turn that off. We're getting quite a lot of moose here. Radio. So what I'm going to do is exactly what I did with the last one. I'm going to take it completely to bits. So one moment, please. I'm just going to clear this away. And then we shall investigate this pump. The mess is cleaned up. Let's take this to bits. And before I do this, I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm just going to draw a little line like this that just goes across all the bits we're about to take to bits so we know which way they go back together again. Let's just draw it down there in case it comes right off the motor. I don't think it really matters. It should be obvious it has been in the past. OK, let's zoom down in this so you can actually see what's happening. The first thing I'm going to be taking apart is actually I want to see what's in the output here. Let's take this cap off. So a couple of screws hold this on. This is the bit that probably contains a bit of fabric, a bit of mesh. The idea being that when you pump bubbles of the detergent, the surfactant and water up, oh, there it is. It's stainless steel, by the look of it. It's a fine bit of gauze. How's that held in? Can I get that out from under? I may have to take more screws out. There are three more screws here that hold this together. And based on previous experiences, they'll hold absolutely everything, everything together. Hopefully there's not going to be too much glued as in previous pumps. Sometimes to make a completely watertight seal, they'll just glue things. But I do see what looks like a, a layer of rubber. That's probably the diaphragms, maybe. OK. So same arrangement as many of the others. It's a swashplate pump. It's got a little... Um, the motor itself has a offset eccentric cam with a hole in it. And that goes onto this pin. And it basically, when it's run, it pumps these little cylinders in a pattern, one at a time. It's just a very simple way of doing things. How much more can this come to bits? it comes to bits more. It does come to bits more. OK. So the liquid intake is coming down into the smaller diaphragm pump. This is exactly like the other one. So these two here are for the bigger uh, pumps. Now, I can show these pumping because uh, I've done that in the past and it worked. So uh, let's try and put this together roughly as it was before, making that sure that pin goes in. And I shall... Um, Connect power to this, and I shall turn the voltage way down. This is where the new chunky leads are very dominant. They're like, uh, because the leads are heavier now, they're kind of wanting to rule this show. Rightio, let's uh, see if I can do this without pinging everything off. Oh, that is so fast, but hold on. Let's see. 
if I can get this down to the point that we can do a sort of slow motion effect on it. There we go. That's it. You can see, if I zoom down that a bit further, you can see that slow motion, what's actually happening. Those little diaphragms are pushing up and down. And that's what does the pumping effect. Okay, that's useful. That's quite nice to see. So is this bit going to come to bits? I hope so. Although I do see what looks like glue at the side, but I could be wrong. It might just be a bit of flash. I think that's glued. I think that is completely glued. That's a shame, because that's not going to let us see what's in here. Um, can this mesh be removed? I don't want to damage the mesh, because if I do, it uh, will destroy the unit. It won't actually be usable again. Should I break this open to see what's inside? I All I think is going to be in here is going to be the in intakes and then uh, the outlets, because these are what are called the umbrella valves. So we've got a couple of little umbrella valves under here, which uh, involve pulling the air down. Um, and they're basically, they call them umbrella valves because it looks like an umbrella that's opened and laid sort of flat across the ports underneath. It's just a tiny little hole. And when the, uh, the liquid is, when the pressure is actually drawing the air in, in the case of these two here, it just lifts the edge of that uh, umbrella up and allows it to flow back. But when you actually... When it's pushing down the weight, it pushes that down, blocks the hole, and the same applies to this one here. And that means uh, this one will be coarser. It's a, a heavier material because it's got the uh, it's got the liquid intake here. But then the output is going through these holes, and there are probably probably if I try and open this, it's going to break. I just know it's going to break. It's not going to. I mean, yeah, it's worth it, really, isn't it? Yes, it is worth it. Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it open. Yes, that is now destroyed, but totally worth it. So here's the pumps, as I mentioned before, that you saw going in slow motion. And as they pull back, here's the liquid channel here that then feeds that tiny little hole there, and it's got the black umbrella valve over it. The umbrella valve, I can show you one of them up close, because this is the outlet one, which I was wondering what uh, where it was located. It's located directly on the other side. So it's basically a soft silicon disc. Very, very small silicon disc. Let me find something to hold this. Uh, let me find a pair of long nose pliers to hold this. Yeah. So a soft silicon disc that's very floppy. And the idea is that when the liquid's pushing up, it just pushes the flaps back. But then when the pressure's back down the way, it actually pulls it down against the surface and stops liquid flowing through it. The other side has those little ones. The black one is probably a stronger one, I'm guessing, for the liquid. So it's got that tiny little hole there. It's got the little one-way valve. That, so the liquid is being pulled this way into that little cylinder. And then it's being pumped out through that hole. Each of these little uh, cylinders with its diaphragm has its own little seal in here, possibly just to keep them all fairly rigid. So each of these holes, to them, the air is passing uh, out of it through these holes, and then the liquid's passing through that hole. Uh, the air inlet feeds this whole channel here. And that then feeds those two air inlets, because there's much higher air to uh, liquid ratio, and they've got tiny little translucent white um, units there. I'm not sure that might, this is where if I adjust anything, it will completely destroy the rest of the video. Yes, I wouldn't do that. But it's got like this little black one here, it's got two little clear ones here that are doing the sort of the one way for the air. And when the two are combined, it pushes it up this central aperture. And the first thing it hits is a very coarse mesh there just to sort of break up the bubbles and create, with the air flowing through liquid, it, it creates largish bubbles. But then it goes through these two pieces of mesh. Now, are these both the same size? That's hard to say. I think they're the same size. It's very hard to say. But uh, one of these is jammed down. It's this one. It is jammed down the end here. Like that. Oh, I'd, I'd get sacked in the factory. I've completely messed that up. 
And then, a little plastic disc is put in to hold that in place. Then this one is put on top. Then this is assembled on top of that with the mousse outlet. So there are three stages here. The air and liquid are being combined and the coarse bubbles will come out. They'll go through that first plastic mesh underneath there. Then they'll go through another layer of mesh and it'll soak the mesh with the liquid. And as the air continues to blow through, it'll blow lots of tiny bubbles to create a mousse. And that mousse will then, with its small bubbles, will then hit another layer. And that creates even smaller bubbles. And the end result of these multiple layers of mesh is that the liquid in there that's being pumped ends up being whipped into a thick mousse that then squirts out the the outlet, no outlet nozzle here. So that's very interesting. It's neat. It's nice that you can get the pumps on their own as opposed to, uh, have to having to buy the whole soap dispenser. I mean, having said that, you, with the soap dispenser, you get the automatic sensor as well that when you put your hand underneath, it squirts the foam into your hand. But, um, and you also get this sort of battery pack. And it's, you know, this one was, uh, this one was about £2.72, £3.50. The whole soap dispenser costs about £10. So it's entirely up to you. But this one looks like a dedicated unit purely. Well, the other one was pretty much dedicated, but it had the external mousser. This is all built into the one unit. Um, but it's interesting. Quite a nice little unit. And it does the job. It creates mousse on demand. So there we go. That's what's inside a dedicated mousse pump. And I'll provide a link to that one listing that's got it. Because uh, I've not found it anywhere else on eBay. Yeah, I was using the Trumpy Brick again to lift everything up towards the camera for better focus. But there we go. Interesting stuff.